Now, one of the most interesting things you can do with a Raspberry Pi is connect it to the outside world. And the simplest way maybe is with a sensor, temperature sensor or something like that. But of course, there are many, many more ways to get information about the outside world into your Raspberry Pi. There's vision, for example, audio. And of course, nowadays we've got things like large language models. Now, my kind of dream is that we're not too far away from kind of the R2-D2 world. So that's basically an edge device. That means it's independent, doesn't need to be connected to the internet. An edge device that is able to see with a vision model. It's able to process a speech and make it into text with a, an audio model it's able to understand that and then call various tools do various things because of a large language model now raspberry pi have a hat as a hardware extension that brings ai to the raspberry pi board now they've just released a new one the ai hat plus two and this one is specifically designed for running large language models and vision models on the Raspberry Pi using a separate coprocessor. So you don't have to occupy the CPU and the memory inside of your main board, this secondary board. Think of it like a GPU in your PC. It handles all the graphics. The CPU doesn't need to worry about it. They just need to communicate with you. This is a separate board that handles all of this stuff for you to add vision and audio and large language models to your Raspberry Pi. So the AI Hat Plus 2, that's what we're gonna talk about today. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's dive into this. So at the heart of the AI Hat Plus 2 is the Halo 10H AI Accelerator. So the Halo 10H is designed to bring generative AI directly to edge devices like the Raspberry Pi 5. That makes it different from the Halo 8, which was in the previous AI hat. Now, the big thing here is the Halo 10H includes a direct DDR interface, allowing it to basically connect DDR uh, RAM and allows it to scale up for much larger models, large language models, large vision models, stable diffusion, and so on. In fact, if you look at this diagram, this is the RAM chip, this is the AI accelerator. We'll talk more about the RAM chip in a moment. And it offers 40 tops at int 4, 20 tops at int 8. So at int 8, it's actually slightly slower than the Halo 8 series. However, at uh, int 4 it's faster uh, but of course the main thing is this is going to be aimed at int 4 quantized to uh, 4 bits for large language models that's what it's used for so that's pretty uh, impressive now said so we talk about the ram so on board of the ai hat plus 2 is 8 gigabytes of lpddr4 uh, and so you basically load up the ram the model into that ram now it's the same ram chip as the raspberry pi 5 so they've already got some of these it's already part of their inventory and it's now the chip they use on here 8 gigabytes okay and it can run llms without using the main ram on your pi 5 boards this is the key thing here this combination here allows you to reduce the compute load and the RAM load, which means that the accelerator isn't using the PCI eBus all the time to access the RAM of the main board. You upload it to this board. You say, here's the model in here. Here's your compute. Go away and do whatever it is the model is designed to do. Now, fitting it is really easy. These are actually the diagrams from the first uh, AI hat, but it's actually exactly the same. They haven't changed anything. So you basically, you put in those uh, stubs, those little pins, pillars there for holding up the board. You put the board on top, you connect up the PCIe connector via this little ribbon cable uh, and that's it. It's all set. Now the new AI hat has a heat sink and that's very easy. You peel back the uh, protective uh, layer for the sticky bits and then you push it down and connect it into these little holes here. Now, of course, you also need to install some software. I'm going to leave a link in the description to the full instructions from Raspberry Pi Fairly simple, just follow those instructions. And once everything is installed, and you can test it by running this Halo RT CLI command line interface, and then you basically say to the firmware, what are you? And it comes back and tells you that it is a Halo H10 board. Now, of course, this is aimed at uh, large language models. Of course, the camera stuff that you could do with the original board also works with this board as well. However, because of that eight gigs of RAM, we're gonna 
focus here on the large language model stuff. So the Halo Model Zoo Gen AI is a collection of pre-trained models and example applications optimized for the Halo AI processors. It includes Halo Olama, an Olama compatible API written in C++ directly on top of the Halo RT framework. And this basically allows us to use a REST interface, so basically a, a, a network interface to query the large language model. So for example, if you are running this in its purest form, you would run Halo O Llama in one terminal window and it comes up as it is. I'm running on port 8000. Then in another terminal window, you might send it a request and you can do that using something like curl. And that will say, look, go to this local host. That's the board you're on port 8000, the same as over there. And I want to call this API Halo V1 list. And what that will do is here it will say I've got five models in the store and it lists them out here. DeepSeek, uh, Llama 3.2 and so on. Of course, this notice here, this all comes back in JSON format. So it's not a human readable interface. So there needs to be a way that you can actually talk to this via a kind of a human interface. Now that's where PyLama comes in. PyLama is a Python script that I've written that handles all of these calls. You don't need to use curl. You don't need to understand JSON. It handles all of this for you and allows you just to chat to it using kind of just you know a normal chat interface that you would from the command line. You can find it in my GitHub repository. The link's in the description. And I will give you a whole dedicated video about PyLama just after this one. I'll just show you now quickly how it works so you can see it in operation, but the full in-depth video is coming soon. Okay, so here in one window, I've run Halo O Llama, so you can see the server is running on port 8000. Okay, here now in another window, I'm gonna run Pi Llama and you specify the model, minus minus model, and I'm gonna run Quen to 1.5 billion. That will go ahead and uh, start the program. I can type in the prompt, tell me five interesting things about London. Now it does take a second for it to load up the model into that eight gigabytes of RAM. It's actually reading it off an SD card from my Pi 5 board and then into that uh, AI hat uh, plus two board. And then it will start giving us a response. Here it comes. Here are five interesting things about London. The Tower of London is the royal palace and residence of the British monarch since 660 uh, AD and so on. So here are all the things coming out and this is running on the uh, Halo board and uh, my Pi Llama script has handled all that for you, so you just get to do normal chatting. As I said, separate video coming about this soon. Now, Pi Llama isn't the only way you can interrogate the LLM on the Halo board. You can also use Open Web UI, a self-hosted AI web interface designed to operate entirely offline with systems like the AI Hat Plus 2. And they have full instructions again uh, to how to install that, and I'll leave a link in the description below. But let me just demo it running for you so you can see what you can achieve with that. Okay, so this is Open Web UI. It's a very familiar chat interface. Up at the top left here, we can select the model. This will query Halo Olam and ask it what models are available. Let's go with Quen to 1.5 billion. Here in the chat box, we can do what we normally do. Tell me five interesting things about New York. Hit OK. That will go away. Load the model up into the AI Hat Plus to if it's not already loaded in the memory and then start giving us the response. Now we need to talk about performance. You've you've got this board, you've installed it, you've got the, the models on it, you've got everything you set up. What kind of performance can you expect? Well, just a couple of things to note. LLM performance is constrained by two factors, compute and memory. In other words, the Halo chip, which we saw there, the AI accelerator and that eight gigabytes of RAM. Now the AI Hat 2 has the same memory bandwidth as the Pi 5. So at the most, it can achieve is the same performance as the CPU on the Pi 5 because it will be bottlenecked by the memory bandwidth. So here we've got the AI accelerator and then that 8 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM. However, just but even though that may sound like a problem, we're going to only get maximum the same performance. It is worth noting that it means that the compute and the memory resources of the Pi 5 aren't occupied by running the AI model. Both the compute and memory usage are offloaded to the AI Hat Plus 2. Let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, so here I have two windows open on my Raspberry Pi 5. And on the left-hand side, I've got HTOP running, which is showing us the CPU and memory usage. As you can see here, not very much CPU usage. Uh, and what we're basically going to do is we're going to load up 
uh, a model into the memory and we're going to start running it. And notice the memory is 2.46 gigabytes and the CPUs are running here at maximum topped out across all the cores. So CPU usage, compute and memory are both being used when you run Olama just on the Raspberry Pi 5 without using the Halo accelerator and that eight gigabytes of RAM in the AI Hat Plus 2. So similar setup on the left here is HTOP running. On the right is the open web UI. And so it's going to be using the Halo uh, chip and the RAM on that board. And I've gone away and I've asked it a query and it's starting to produce the tokens here. Notice over here, no CPU usage, nothing happening there. The RAM usage hasn't gone up because all this is happening on the actual AI Hat Plus 2 board. So no local resources. So your Pi could be doing loads of other things of course edge stuff and relying on the AI Hat to actually give it back the results, freeing up the Raspberry Pi to do whatever it else is that you're planning to do with it. So there you go, very different resource uses when you're using the AI Accelerator, which is an, an add-on basically, giving you extra resources in terms of compute and in terms of RAM. Okay, so here are the performance numbers. I've got three models that I've tested out, out of the five, the other two show similar kinds of things. I've got Quen 2 1.5 billion, I've got Llama 3.23 billion, and I've got DeepSeek R1 distilled from Quen at 1.5 billion. The big thing to notice here is that DeepSeek is a thinking model. So if I'm running this on the Raspberry Pi CPU, which will of course occupy all of the CPU cores and occupy loads of memory, as I've just shown you, you get about 10 tokens a second. When you run it on the uh, AI hat, plus two, then you're going to get 8.1. So it's slightly slower on the AI hat, but of course it's completely independent running on its own resources. And you can see this kind of repeated with the Llama 3.2, 4.1 tokens a second, uh, 2.7 when you're running on the AI hat plus two. Now you may ask, why is this at 10 and this is down at 4.1? Why is this at eight and this is down at two? Because basically this is a 1.5 billion parameter model. This is a three billion parameter model. So it's twice the size, which means it has to access twice as much memory, so memory bandwidth again, twice as much memory before the same results come out, or before the results come out, They're probably not the same results, uh, but your answers come out. And so you can see that reflected in the actual performance. And again, we're back up here to a 1.5 billion token once the, the performance goes up. And they're very close actually in this case, 7.18 and 6.9. So this seems to be one that actually is gonna give you the sim most similar performance between the CPU and the uh, AI Hat Plus 2. Okay, so there you go, the new AI Hat Plus 2. It's available for $130, and it adds that second processor, the Halo processor, and that extra eight gigs of RAM to your board, and you can offload a whole bunch of different AI tasks to it. Love to hear your thoughts about it in the comments below. Okay, that's it, my name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Love it if you could do that for me. And uh, if you like these kind of videos, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.